The economics of crowdfunding have a long history beyond the websites you might be familiar with. Alexander Pope successfully translated Homer's Iliad into English through crowdfunding. Just look at this 300-year-old list of subscribers. On the right is the backers of a Mozart concerto. Joseph Pulitzer successfully funded the building of the Statue of Liberty's pedestal with 120,000 backers. Stock exchanges are highly formalized crowdfunding platforms with the benefit of partial ownership. NPR and PBS exist because of continual crowdfunding. Not all crowdfunding projects are entirely above board. This is the top eight controversial crowdfunding projects. Number eight, the Anonabox router promised private web browsing with a tiny, cheap piece of hardware. The $7,500 goal was ballooned to almost 600000 before a group of computer experts fully convinced Kickstarter to suspend the campaign, being exposed as a repackaging of Chinese hardware and proof of a completely vulnerable software over Wi-Fi was the death knell for this peripheral. Number seven, potato salad. An Ohio man set up a trolley joke fund to create some potato salad. His $10 goal went viral, raising $55,000. Now, this is controversial because when compared to understandably more important life events on these websites, it's hard to compare little Timmy is going to die of horrible ass cancer, but you would rather fund some potato salad. Number six, Tentacle Bento. Kickstarter pulled the funding for this proposed card game. The situation can best be summarized by this tweet from at Von Roskew. Kickstarter didn't want a game about raping teenage girls with tentacles funded under their name today. Man children angry, nobody surprised. Number five, Zach Braff was the star of the long running show Scrubs. When he solicited funds for a follow up to his film Garden State, many asked why he needed the money. Braff was totally taken by surprise by the backlash, even after millions of more dollars were raised by traditional Hollywood financiers who would obviously want a cut of the profits. Rich dude asking for money for his smug indie project instead of putting up his own cash? That's why people reacted negatively, Zach. Number four, Yog Ventures. Crowdfunding relies on the premise that the fund will be used for what it says it will be used. Uh, the money pot is empty. Um, oh. This is the money that we were supposed to be saving for the Yogscast video game. Uh, Do you know where that is? Um, Yogg's Cast is a popular YouTube that crowdfunded a proposed video game called Yogg Ventures. Half a million dollars was raised and sometime later the game was cancelled with a promise that none of the money would be refunded. Number three, abortion. In the United States, half of all pregnancies are unintended. Rates are highest among low-income women age 18 to 14. It's higher still among women without high school degrees. Abortions are expensive, so when this woman named Bailey tried to crowdfund her abortion, the shitstorm of negative comments caused GoFundMe to back down and cancel the fund. But under further pressure, GoFundMe released the donations to Bailey and changed its site rules forbidding, quote, fundraising for termination of life. GoFundMe also canceled number two on this list, Sweet Cakes by Melissa. I want to deny basic goods and services to gay people. The couple were fined $135,000, not for discrimination, as Christian douchebags would have you think, but for doxing the lesbian couple that wanted a cake made. The bigots were found liable for the slew of anti-gay harassment the lesbian couple received, so these cowards started a GoFundMe, which was swiftly canceled by GoFundMe because you cannot raise funds to help pay for your crimes. Which brings us right into number one, the uncanceled legal fund for the Ferguson police officer, Darren Wilson. GoFundMe received a huge backlash, but a principled stand was taken to allow raising money for his legal defense. Half a million dollars was raised between two pages when it was shut down by organizers and the money was collected. GoFundMe shut down legal fund campaigns for the shooter of Walter Scott and alleged serial rapist officer Daniel Ken Holtzclaw. This fund was established before a rule change that funds cannot be raised for legal defenses when the charge is heinous, violent, hateful, sexual, or or discriminatory. Later, Officer Wilson was not indicted by the grand jury and did not face a trial. The confirmed racist Darren Wilson is now basically permanently unemployable, and the Justice Department later chastised the Ferguson Police Department for institutionalized racism and disproportionately targeting 
black people. You know what crowdfunding project isn't controversial or run by awful people? The marriage of Cassaniah and and, okay. and also the one minute history patron. Donating is a pure and generous thing. And we are poor as shit, which is why we are pleading to the crowdfunding economy. If you have something to give, then get off your ass and give it now. We are already 4% uh, of our small goal for a cheap wedding and honeymoon in November. That means we are 96% away from our goal and still poor as shit. So help contribute to that and it will be remembered forever by a very happy couple in love. Subscribe for more One Minute History. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.